Good morning, booktube, YouTube, this is Johnny. <coughs> it is, today is a Friday. <laughs> it is Friday. It is January the 1st, 2024. It is 9.28 in the morning. I'm waking up. My wife left to do errands pick up our granddaughters, Josie Joy and Coral Lee. They're going to come over this, this morning. They're still out of school, Christmas break. So, as you all know, our oldest son lives down the street, Caleb John and his wife Emily. Yeah, Caleb has his a birthday this, this month. He'll be 43 years old. Carol will have her birthday. She'll be 71 this year, the 2024. I'll be 72 if I don't die before August 2024. I thought while I was doing this video, I'm just going to be, get right to the point. No rambling, no blabbing away here. Uh, well, first of all, here in West Michigan, we you know we live not that far from Lake Michigan, about maybe 15 minutes. And so we get lake effect snow, but we're supposed to get snow maybe next week, but we didn't get that crack of any snow in December. And in January, we expect to get snow. It doesn't really get warm here in West Michigan until, oh, May. <laughs> it's cold uh, January, February, March, April and into May it gets it's not really that warm anyway uh, I was I showed you the other morning what I read in the mornings like this morning I've been reading general directions for a comfortable walking with God Robert Bolton for morning devotions but I'm going to read to you what I read throughout the day uh, fiction and nonfiction uh, what I want to I have started reading these books in 2023 and I continue, I'm, my goal is to finish reading them in 2024. And I'm just going to show them. I'm not going to go into great detail. I'm not going to go into them because I don't know when my wife will show up with the granddaughters. So I've shown you this book. Uh, it's a nonfiction. This is what I read in the afternoons. A Radical History of the World by Neil Faulkner. I've read uh, 239 pages. I'm on chapter 11, The Age of Blood and Iron, 1848 until 1873. So I've been reading this as far as nonfiction. And then I've been reading, this is historical fiction, The Valley of the Fallen, which is take is where Franco, the Spanish Civil War, I think that's where his memorial is in Spain, the Valley of the Fallen. This is by Carlos, Carlos Roget, Rogas, I can't pronounce Spanish names, but it's translated from the Spanish by Edith Grossman. This is historical fiction on the life of Goya, the Spanish painter, and it kind of looks at his life and then you have an, uh, another narrative going on in the novel of an uh, art historian who's been contracted to write a life on the art. He's, he's an art historian and he was contracted, signed to write a, 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 uh, looking at the life of Goya and looking at his paintings. So there's, a, there's an analysis of Goya's paintings and his life and then it goes into the life of the historian who's kind of like in his, he's older and he's an alcoholic and he's, he's just kind of life of falling apart. So I've been reading this. And then I've been reading uh, The End by Atola Bartis, translated from the Hungarian by Judith Skoskli. This I've read about was 300 pages of this, The End, uh, which I've been reading, I plan to finish. 
That's his novel. I don't think I've showed this book to you. I got it in the mail the other day. It's called Maestros and Monsters, Day and Nights with Susan Sentang and George Steiner. This is a memoir by Robert Boyers. As, as I've mentioned over the years, George Steiner and George, Susan Santang and George Steiner are two of my, I find most uh, interesting intellectuals, writers, essayists, novelists. Uh, George Steiner is mainly known, I think, for his essays. I've shown those to you over the years. And I am, I've been interested in Susan Santang since I was in high school. She's always intrigued me. I have all her writings and her biography was just put out a couple years ago. And I have other books about her and this caught my eye. So I, I just been reading it because, uh, and George Steiner, I didn't know much about, except I really enjoy his essays. So, I've been reading this as far as nonfiction. I've read almost half of it. I'll probably finish it this weekend. And then, you know, I've been reading uh, for biography, The Maverick, George Whitfeld, and the Golden Age of Publishing by Thomas Hardy. One thing interesting about this book, what Thomas Harding does, he looks at, okay, you look at what uh, George Whitfield and his publishing company, what he looks at, what books that they published, he just zeroes in on certain books and he goes into the, the publishing history of those books, like Whit, uh, George Whitfield and they published Lolita by Nagatop and there's a chapter just devoted to how that that book got about to be published and all the what it was kind of considered pornography and there was all kinds of uh, outrage. It's like it, I think it was published in the late fifties and there was a, it was charged the porn, pornography and obscenity laws and it was goes into the legal battles and then it goes into Mary McCarthy's book The Group. You know, each chapter goes into the publishing history of that book, the group, a chapter on Lolita. And then last night, uh, George Whitfield published the writings of Saul Billow, and it goes into Saul Billow and publishing of Herzog and uh, things like that. So it's very interesting if you're interested in the, you look at a certain novel and you don't realize all the controversy or all the work or all the things going on behind it being published. So I find this very interesting. I've read, and this one I've read about 131 pages. This is biography. And then I want to finish reading Lies and Sorcery by Elsa Monrant, Morant, translated by Jenny McPhee. I really want to get, I really have enjoyed this. This is a great novel. I highly recommend reading it. Uh, yeah, I plan to really finish it this month. I've read 453 pages. It's around 760 pages. So I want to finish reading this to my to, to be read pile. And then I want to finish reading the letters of Gustave Forbert. I've read in here, I've read 451 pages. I'm in the year, years 1866 to 1869. Yeah, I've really enjoyed reading these letters. Highly recommend it. And this is edited and translated by Francis Stagemeyer Muller. So I want to finish reading this. Also, I've been reading a biography, which is down in the lower level on my desk down there by Jeffrey Wall on the life of Fulbert, which I read along with this. I don't have it up here right now. And then I'm reading for nonfiction, uh, Francis Bacon, An Anatomy of Enigma by Michael Pellaprat. 
This is a biography on the very famous modernist painter Francis Bacon. I've read almost half of this, which is around 340 pages. I think it looks like that. Let me see. 366 pages. So these are the kind of things I read when I'm not reading. I like I read, like I've said, I write. I read. The Christian books primarily in the mornings until about 1, 12, 1 o'clock. Now, now not, that's not, like I said, it's not a, 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 sometimes I'll get into a kind of a contemplative kind, and I'll want to stay in a certain book. Like I showed you recently, I was reading Robert Bolton's book, uh, Comfort for an Afflicted Conscience, and I read that straight for almost two days, all day long. <laughs> and sometimes I'll do that. I'll read a book and I'll really get into it and I'll just read it for a couple of days until I get burned out. But I plan to read this. I just got this in the mail. I had another copy of this. I had a hardback of this copy and I decided to send that copy to my other son. I have a, my oldest son lives down the street. My, our other son, Josiah, and his wife, Hannah, and his two daughters. They live in Linden, Washington, and he is a Christian school teacher. And I plan to send him my other extra copy of this book. And uh, we have a, our third child, our, our last child is Bethany, who has four children, uh, Louisa, Margaret, Jack, and Nora. They live in, her husband's Andy is in a, uh, an engineer. They live in Denver. So anyway, really enjoying reading the letters of Gustave Faubert, Francis Bacon, a biography on this very famous, one of my, uh, one of my favorite modernist painters, Lies and Sorcery, also Morant, really highly recommend this. Check this out. This was first published in, I think it was 1948 in Italian language. Italian writer, really enjoying reading this. Uh, really find this interesting. The, I'm really into, like I said, the history of books publishing, newspapers, editors, you know, people like that. And so I've been, it, this is kind, it could have been more in depth. It could be more, but it's kind of breezy, kind of gossipy, but I really enjoy reading it. I like reading about, um, like the next chapter, they have one here on, Chapter 15, he was friends with Mick Jagger. <laughs> There's a chapter on Mick Jagger. Uh, anyway, there's a chapter on Catcher in the Rye by Stallinger, which he published, George Whitfield. Really, I've, I really like, I've been reading the, the the book is divided into one section is the first, so you have two. This is on George Steiner and then the, the 112 pages is about Robert Boyer's uh, relationship with Susan Santa. He knew her for like 40, 50 years. He met her back in the 60s. He was a, a professor at Skid, uh I think it's Skidmore College. He had a small literary magazine. He started in the 60s and I won't go into all the details, but if you're really interested in the life of Susan Santang and George Steiner, Robert Bors knew them personally. He knew George Steiner for 40 years. They had an ongoing relationship, friendship, exchanged letters. Same with Susan Santang, they were friends. <coughs> I won't, but if you're interested in it, it's a, this is a memoir. I highly recommend it if you're into George Steiner and Susan Santang. This I 
I kind of have mixed feelings about. Uh, I'm reading it, but I'm not blown away by it. And maybe if I finish it, I might give a little book review on this. I don't usually do book reviews because I find them difficult in how to go into analysis without how you don't want to be, give spoilers. But anyway, I do plan to finish reading this by Atala Bort, Bartis, The End. So I've been reading this and reading The Valley of, of the Fallen by Carlos Regos. Yeah, I, I've read in here about 100 pages. I'll, st I'll keep reading it. I, I've enjoyed reading it, historical fiction. And I really enjoyed reading The Radical History of the World by Neil Faulkner. So I read this in the afternoon. I'll probably read, I usually late afternoons. I'll read these in the evening. I've been reading this in the evenings, late afternoons. Reading these in the late afternoons and evenings. I usually read this bef like, like from in the evenings until I go to bed around 11. I read this in the afternoons, Francis Bacon biography. I read this in the late afternoon and evenings. And I read my Puritan reprint in the mornings until about one o'clock. And you know, like I said, in the mornings, my wife and I, before she left, we had devotions. We read a devotional book and we pray and we talk. And, and I'm always writing in my diary, which takes up time. I'm on page 12 this morning. Yeah, I'm always writing in my diary. I have an online diary, Crooked Fingers. So throughout the day, you know, I'm not just always reading throughout the day. I, I watch the birds, I feed the birds, fill up the bird bath. And sometimes I go to thrift stores. Yesterday I was going to go to a thrift store around here and the car wouldn't start. So finally, after a third try, it kicked in the engine. And so I drove it to our local auto repair shop, Maplewood Auto, and made an appointment to have it checked next week. But before I made this video, I went out to the garage and clicked on the car. It ignited right away, and I let it run for about 10 minutes. Because I was going to go to thrift stores yesterday and look for used books. Yeah, I still might do that, but I'm kind of kind of freaked because I don't want to get stuck someplace and have to call up AA about getting it told told to the car place. So, and I got a book coming in the mail, a book of essays that I read. I read about this person. Recent, I read about. Uh, I read one thing about reading. Uh, this book, Maestros and Monsters, uh, there's Robert Boyers at his college. Every They had a summer writers conference or a, a conference where they invite in the summer to this college, uh, sit around all these intellectuals, writers and thinkers and publishers to discuss or just like getting these people together and just having discussions. And he mentions all these people I never heard of. And so I look up their books on Amazon and I ordered one from an essayist that I never heard of, which I'll get in the mail today. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But a lot of the people mentioned in here, I have their writings. I thought about doing a video of every person that's mentioned in here writer or thinker or philosopher or whatever, I would show them in a video, but I thought, uh, I, I, have a, I have a lot of different books. Well, you know, I have a huge amount of, I have a big library, so I have a lot of different books. I, I often sit here, like this morning I was thinking, before I made this video, I was thinking of all the Christian books that I've gotten rid of. Now, I wouldn't do that right now, get rid of any of my Christian books. But I don't know, about maybe 10, 10 years ago, 
I got rid of of over a thousand Christian books and I sold Christian books way when I was in seminary I sold a set of John uh, what was his name John Gill's commentaries which are very rare wish I didn't hadn't sold them and I've gotten rid of a lot of books Christian books now I wish I didn't haven't gotten rid of them and that's the same way about when like right now, three years ago I got rid of over a thousand secular books I took them to thrift stores I took them to blue stocking shop bookshop for in-store credit I wish what I'm trying to say is I wish I had every single book I have ever owned or bought and I had them in a house filled with bookcases every single book in order cataloged and cat you know I wish you know that's a book a book lover's dream <laughs> to have every single book that I had since I was like 22 up until now I'm 71 every single book on shelves in a bookcase in a huge house and I could just wander around and live in this book world <laughs> but hey I have I have a lot of books and there's no end when you're a book lover and you're a book collector and you're a bookworm there is no end last night I kind of kind of I went to Amazon where I ordered and I I canceled orders because I had so many books ordered up until next until the end of this year I got so many books and so I kind of said okay there has to be an end and I'm trying to read what I just showed you this morning not keep piling on piling piling on books and plus when it right comes down to it what I want to do is I want to have a comfortable walk with God and yeah that's what's important is walking with the Lord Jesus Christ seeking his face living a life of prayer contemplation and uh, feeding my soul uh, keeping my eyes on Jesus running the race set before me living a life of devotion a devotional life a life of worship a life of gratitude and thankfulness to God a life of bearing witness to the saving work of Christ and that's what's really important so yeah and there's a lot of Christian books coming out in 2024 that I I know coming out so anyway I just thought I'd show you Friday Reads these are the books I showed you are kind of books I read on Friday in the afternoons early evenings nighttime these are kind of books I read in the mornings I'm always writing in my diary I'm always I'm, I'm on the internet I have to con I mean I'm not really I watch booktube I read the news I, I do a lot of, I read a, I read a lot of literary sites not a lot but three or four every day look at what's being published right now you have the end of the year list sales I mean list of books that came out in 2023 things like that so anyway I'm rambling I hope you had a good reading week I hope you have a good reading weekend thank you for your comments I'll post this video and if you got any questions or and also you can always read my online diary Crooked Fingers which I write in every single day and where I write about books and what I'm reading every day so anyway I'll sign off and do pray that you have a good weekend thank you for your comments thank you for the new subscribers and yeah and I also I have a pile of used books down the lower level from thrift stores that I will show in a few, maybe Sunday when Carol's at church I'll show those show you the book I get in the mail today so and I got a book coming Friday and no, I'll Friday not this coming Sunday as a Christian book and the classics of Western spirituality that I didn't know about until yesterday and then I ordered it and it's supposed to come in the mail Sunday I collect the classics of Western spirituality which I've shown to you anyway this is going to come to an end once again, may the Lord bless 
until next time, bye.